Hey guys, Nick Smith here, and today I'm going to teach you a new way to color tone and how to use Adobe's online color wheel. Now, the first thing we're going to want to do is actually go onto Chrome or whatever web browser you use, and then go to color.adobe.com, and then this will pop up. And now, this has a whole bunch of tools you can use, but the ones we're going to be using for today is the complementary wheel. And what the complementary does is it picks two colors that go really well together, and typically it's just whatever is opposite. So you can actually just kind of spin it around and see what color like scheme you like, and then you can go ahead and use that for whatever you're doing in your image. Now, typically what I like to do is I like to use warm and cold tones. So I tend to stick to the orange area through the blue area, and maybe even a little bit into this purple here, but I typically don't use green, red, or pink at all. I have seen it used very well in some cases, but typically I don't really like to use it. So let's go ahead and start with something like an orange and teal, and let's go ahead and just kind of spin this till we get to a nice teal color. And now the cool thing about the color wheel is it actually gives you the codes here, the hex codes for what exactly what the color is for what you're selecting at. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag that just a little bit so it matches a little better. And I'm gonna go ahead and start with this color right here. And now back into Photoshop. And now we're going to open up a new layer. And I'm in my history panel for some reason. Let me go back to layers. All right, we're going to open up a new layer and we're going to go to here to the adjustments layer and we're going to create solid color. And now we're just going to go here to where this number sign is or pound sign or hashtag, whatever you want to call it. And then go ahead and paste in that code that we just had. And that's going to apply this. So now what we want to do is we want to go grab the opposite one. So for now, let's go ahead and just hide that. So let's go back to our web browser. And because I removed it, it turned that one black, which is not correct. So let's go ahead and go back to this. And it's screwed up my thing. So let's see if we can just enter that and then it'll fix it. That's another thing. If you have a color you want to use and then you go ahead and enter it in the box and hit enter, what will happen is it'll load up and then it'll automatically find the complementary for it. So that's exactly what this just did. So we're going to go ahead and select this complementary color now. And instead of using cut for this, I'm going to use copy. So control C. I'm not sure what the shortcut is for Mac because I don't really use Mac. But so let's go back to Photoshop. And then we'll go ahead and make a new solid color layer. And then let's paste that in. OK, so right now you're going to find yourself wondering exactly what I'm doing, but it'll all make sense really soon. So let's go ahead and change this to soft light. And the reason I like to use soft light is just because it kind of shows it and it's very vivid uh, with what the color is actually doing. Uh, and let's do that for this one as well. And as you'll notice, these two colors together make kind of a green color, which will look kind of cool once we actually get this toned the way we're going to. But for now, let's go ahead and turn off the highlight layer because I like to always put my cold tones in the shadows. Um, you can do it the other way around. It's just something that I typically tend to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just double click on this layer here, and that's going to bring up layer style. And now we're going to be in the blending options tab right away, which is what we need. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here, and then we're going to hold down Alt, and then we're going to click on one of these. And what that's going to do is it's going to separate that. So as you'll see, it just kind of pulls that off. And what this does is it allows us to change where it applies. And what this does is it has two points. So there's this point right here and that point. And what this does is it feathers it depending on where you're actually selecting. Uh, and you just kind of slide it back and forth to play with it. But since we want to apply this to the shadows, we're going to start with the highlights and drag this down. And typically when I apply to shadows, I grab this first one and I just drag it all the way to the left because I find that uh, having it too, too towards the middle tends to get too much in my neutrals and I don't like that look. So now we're going to grab this one and we're just going to kind of slowly move it over until we see this mostly just applying into the shadows. Did I change my, yeah, I did change my blending mode. I was just making sure because that looks really kind of a strong color, but we're going to go ahead and just kind of tweak this until we see it applying where we want it. And that's basically in the shadows. If you look, it's not really affecting her skin very much. So let's go ahead and turn that off and let's toggle the layer. And as you'll see, it's applying mostly to just the dark areas. Now, right now it's at 100%, so we definitely don't want it that high. So let's go ahead and change the opacity to something like 30. And then, as you'll see, it's just a slight bit of uh, added tone to that. So now we're going to do the opposite. So let's go ahead and turn on the solid color of orange, and then let's double-click on the layer. 
bring up the layer style menu and then let's go ahead and grab the shadow side and then move it over and now you want to make sure you're on underlying layer because if you're on this layer it's not going to do the it's not going to have the right effect uh, it will not uh, actually get you the results that we're getting here so now we're going to go ahead and drag this over and typically i don't drag this as far i usually keep it somewhere in the midtones. i'm not going to just drag it all the way to the right like i did with the shadows um but i mean for this one it actually does kind of work but typically so now we're just going to move this uh second slider over until we get it to where we're seeing it and i want it in her skin and on the background so i think about a hundred is a good spot okay let's hit okay and confirm that and let's go to opacity and then let's adjust that to 30 as well so now if we toggle that on off you can see exactly where that applied and now it's starting to actually look a little better when we just had the teal it doesn't look so great when we only have orange that doesn't look so great but when we combine them together it creates a very pleasing color grade and this is a really easy way to kind of get that look to your images that's a little more cinematic and complementary than what you might be doing by you know tweaking different layers yourself and not actually following a guide so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go ahead and just kind of group these two together and i'm just going to click one hold down shift click the other and then hit Control g or command g if you're on mac and then we can toggle that on and off and now if we want to we could further adjust the opacity just by moving the little slider here or typing in what we want but i think i like the way it looks at 100. Um, maybe i would drop it down just a little bit to something like 86. yeah and i actually i really like that it kind of reminds me of like a the color tone to it i should say kind of reminds me of like a vintage kind of like pinup poster like they, they always had this kind of like orangey yellow tone to them so all right, so that's our first image. I really wanted to show a few different images for this to show how it can apply because this is a studio shot and you know, you're know you not always gonna be shooting in the studio. So next image is an outdoor headshot I took and let's go ahead and go back to the Adobe color picker here, or color wheel I should say, and then let's go ahead and select a different type of toning. So let's do something like a little bit of a golden kind of yellow in between orange and yellow and uh, kind of dark blue here. And I wanna use these dark tones, so I'm gonna use that one and the one that's over here. So I'm gonna use these two because I want them uh, you know, a little more prominent. So let's go ahead and select this, copy it, go back to Photoshop, open our solid color layer, paste it, change it to soft light, turn it off for now, go back to Chrome, or whatever web browser you're using if you're not using Chrome. So it all does the same thing, it gets you down the web. Uh, so let's go ahead and copy that again. Back to Photoshop, another solid color layer, paste it, change it to soft light. Okay, so like I said, I like to channel my shadows first, and that's just a personal preference. I find it easier to balance my highlights if I do my shadows first, and it's a little easier to kind of tweak it to where you want it. Um, you might want to try it the other way just to see how you like it, but this is what I usually do. So once again, we're just going to drop that all the way, and you separate these two sliders by holding down the Alt key. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's option on Mac. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. If you're on Mac and you know, leave a comment down below, and I will pin it. So now we're gonna grab this one, and you don't have to hold Alt when you after you've already separated. You can just go ahead and grab them after that. So I'm gonna grab this one, and we're just gonna kind of slide this over until we're happy with where it is. And I, I do want a little bit, like the dark parts of her hair, uh, I want that to kind of pick up that blue tone. So I'm gonna leave that like that. And now let's go ahead and turn on the highlight layer. And then we'll hold down Alt, grab this. Slide that over. I think I like it about right about 220. And let's grab this. Start sliding it over. About 115. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so right now it's way too strong because if we you know where to actually toggle this you'll see it's like really kind of fake looking but instead of actually going through and you know actually adjusting each layer i just wanted to show you what you could do is just apply your tone like this and then only adjust the group 
and then see where you like both tones at. And this would be useful if you don't want to, you know, dial it in for both or if you just are in a hurry or whatever. And just for the sake of demonstrating, I think I'm just going to use this to actually decide my opacity. And I think I like about 35. Oh, actually open the layer style. If you look, it just, it adds a really nice kind of pleasing uh, warmth to the highlights and adds that little bit of darkness to the background. And now, see, the problem here with using the slider on the group is I'm now deciding maybe I want a little more blues in my shadows because I like the color that it's adding to the skin, but I don't think it's enough in the shadows. So I'm going to bring that back to 100. And I'm going to go ahead and put in 35. Oops, accidentally. I uh, got a new mic set up and I cannot see where my keyboard is right now, so I'm kind of typing blind. So I'm going to put that to 35. And then I'm going to dial the opacity of the shadows around until I'm happy. And I really like where it's at at about 70. So let's actually go ahead and just kind of nudge that up so it's even because I'm very OCD about even numbers. I like zeros and fives just so it's easy to replicate. I don't like odd numbers. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there like that. Um, so let's go ahead and just toggle it on and off as a group and as you'll see it just it's a really nice tone I'm actually really happy with that and I think in my final image I'm going to end up using that uh, color gray because all of these are unedited I literally haven't touched them this is only being color graded so now final image we're going to go ahead and switch to and this is a outdoor portrait I took uh, because I wanted to show that we can do studio this kind of really dark uh, background outdoor portrait and uh, an area with more uh, actual light to it and stuff like that. So we got a really bright studio shot, a really dark outdoor shot, and now we have a more balanced of lights and darks. So we're going to go back into Chrome. And now for this one, I want to do something a little funky. I want to do like a purple and yellow kind of uh, tone here. So it's going to be kind of weird. Um, I don't want to get it too green just because it starts to look weird. So I think about here is good. So let's go ahead and copy this code. I keep trying to select it by dragging, but that doesn't really work for this website. So when you do this, what I'm doing is I just click here and then I hit Control A and then I hit Control C to copy. Control A selects everything that's in the window. I'm not 100% sure if that's a shortcut on Mac once again. If it is and you know it, leave a comment, let me know, and I'll pin it to the top so everyone else can know, because I know a lot of people do use Mac. So we're going to go back into Photoshop, and then we're going to create another solid color layer. And we're going to go ahead and paste. And then we're going to change the blending mode down to soft light. And let's go back and grab our yellow color. Control A, Control C, go back. Solid color layer. Control V to paste. Okay, and soft light. And together it makes this kind of weird red orange tone. So if we were to actually balance this a little more where it's not just like that straight like shadow to uh, highlight blend, if we were to actually kind of like make them overlap a little, it would create this orange color in the middle of where the tones meet. And I will demonstrate that for this just because I think it's kind of a cool color. So it could look really nice. All right, so let's go ahead and turn that off for now. And then let's grab the shadow and double click. And then let's hold down Alt, separate it. And then we'll click over here, drag it over. And like I said, I don't wanna to go too far because I wanna actually create an overlap. So I'm thinking about 111 is good. And I like the feather to that. I think it's applying to a decent amount of the shadows here. So now let's go ahead and turn this on. And you don't you don't want to double click. When I say double click the layer, you don't want to click on the title because that'll bring up this text box and you don't want that. So double click on the side of the layer. And I'm pretty sure if you were to actually go ahead and click on the actual box here, it'll bring up this. So you definitely want to click away from the text and not on the box. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring that up. And now let's hold down Alt, click and drag and bring that off. And we have our feather to 111 on the other tone. So let's go ahead and bring this over from there. 
and I think that's too bright. That's not going to look good. Let's go ahead and do that. Bring this back. And let's confirm. And now I'm going to go back into the shadow tone and I'm just going to play with it and try to get that orange color to come through. So see if I drag this back, we're starting to get that. Like see we're starting to get that orange color in this little mid tone area here. And if we were to go ahead and whoops, I accidentally drag that from that. Uh, I accidentally dragged the shadows over instead. So I'm going to go grab that and I'm just going to move this back over. So if we were to move this closer, you'll see it actually does that. And you don't want that to happen because it starts to look strange. But let's go ahead and just kind of move this over a tiny bit. Tweak that. I think about right there, we're starting to get a really good gradient. And now it looks ugly now because we haven't blended it. But as you'll see, we have the purple in the shadows. Then we have the yellow, and then we have this really cool orange color that happened in the midtones here. So let's go ahead and confirm that. Hold down Shift, click Control G, Command G to group, and then we can toggle it together. And right now it's just in soft light, uh, but this looks very vivid. Um, if we were to actually change this to like solid color, I kind of wonder what it would look like. So just uh, or normal blending mode, just just entertain me for a second. I just want to see. Okay, so that looks really, really bad. Um, but let's go back to soft light. Okay, so doing a quick toggle here. We can see that's making a huge impact. So let's go ahead and just lower the opacity as a whole because we don't want to change the toning too much because we kind of figured out that delicate balance where we get the oranges along with the other colors. So let's just lower this opacity. Oh, I'm actually only affecting the highlights. I uh, didn't select group. Okay, don't do that. Make sure you're on group. And I think I really like it somewhere about 40. Uh, maybe that's a little overboard. Let's go back down to like 30. Toggle it on and off. I think that looks really good. I, I'm actually really happy with that. It's really stylized. It's kind of a kind of dramatic effect, and I think it looks really nice. All right, guys, so that is how you can use Blend If to color tone your images along with Adobe Color to get your complementing colors correct. And I hope this is able to help you guys. If it was, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you're not already. Feel free to share this on Facebook, Reddit, Twitter, any social media you see fit. As long as my work is being shared and people are learning, I'm happy. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.